All right. I guess we could all just introduce ourselves. Like I said before, if you didn't hear me, my name is Crystal Ng. I am co-chair of the CPAC for Freetown Lakeville Regional School District. Let me put that last part in. So who wants to go next? Melissa. Hi, I'm Melissa McKenna, and um, I was treasurer last year and I guess trying to be <laughs> co-chair this year for a CPAC. My name is Stephanie Gilharm, and I am the secretary of the Free Lake CPAC. Jessica. I'm Jess Allred, and I'm now the treasurer for CPAC. And that's it for officers. Anybody else? Rick? Uh, yes, Crystal, I didn't know if you wanted the other parents to introduce themselves. Rick Madeira, Superintendent of Schools. Crystal invited and Crystal and Missla invited me in and I'm really just here hopefully to provide some support and maybe answer any questions you have and uh, look forward to some future meetings this year. Thanks. I'm Jean Fox. I'm the Vice Chair of the School Committee and I'm really happy to be here. Looking forward to attending as many of these meetings as possible to work with all of you. Thank you. Mary Beth, since you're up there. Yep, just Mary Beth Moore, parent and uh, member at large, I guess. Anybody else, Liz? Liz Carlin, Director of Student Services. Anya? I see you. <laughs> Head cheerleader, come on. <laughs> you hear me? I did say it. Tanya McCluskey for the invite. Melissa Freed. Hi, I'm Melissa Freed, and I am a parent and a member. Emra. Okay. Debra? She's muted herself. Okay, there we go. Hi, um, Deborah Quinn. I am a parent. This is actually my first time attending one of these meetings, so I was just coming on to listen. Okay. Did I get everybody? I think so. I think so. Okay. Well, <laughs> as everybody knows, this year we're kind of doing a reboot. We have written new bylaws and it's upgraded after, I think, I want to say 15 years. So if anybody needs a copy of those or anybody wants to take a look at them, you know, feel free to ask. But I believe for all the members, I sent out the bylaws. So that's one thing that we can vote on like right now. So this is the first time we've actually ever done a vote on anything other than um, just chairperson, right? Um, so all in favor of the new bylaws? Anybody? Hi. <laughs> I, I know I've read them. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then there we go. Bylaws passed. All right. Now we have to do the officers. I can't nominate myself for co-chair. So Melissa, where are you? You're not on my screen anymore. I mean, can't hear. Up oh, there you are. I nominate Melissa for co-chair. Well, I, I, I guess I should return that favor, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, not everybody jumping saying. He, I said oh, second. Oh, okay. Second. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's co-chair. Oh boy, the biggest that too. Here. Okay, so for secretary, again, we have the fabulous Stephanie. Thank you. Somebody want to second that? <laughs> I will second Stephanie. All right, Thank there you. we go, Stephanie. And for treasurer, we have Jess, who we had to beg, to plead. <laughs> Who's second? Oh, 
there we go. Woo. That was tough, guys. Thank okay. you. Okay. Anybody going to nominate me? I can't really nominate myself. Oh. I nominate Crystal. How do you say last name? Ing? Ing, yeah. That's <laughs> co-chair woman. That was oh, okay. You couldn't say your last name. Crystal, what's her face? I could go with that too. Superwoman. Yeah. All right. There we go. So we're all set with that. So next is we have to pick dates for next year. Um, like what would be a good day? I'm going to bring up my calendar. I think Wednesdays are completely out, I believe. Um, so I was thinking of either Tuesdays or Thursdays. Okay. Which day would be better? You know, Tuesdays are better for me than Thursdays. Thursday. I can easily make it work. I can make it work. Are we looking at every month or every other month next year? For right now, I think we're going to do every other month until we get a base of like how many people are coming and what what exactly we're going to be doing. Okay. Because now that we actually have money, we can um, just kind of figure it out and you know, if we get more people, if we can get more people to come, we can do it that way. Um, like I said, I had to go ahead and get my own Zoom account. So this is my account. Everybody's welcome to use it. I just had to get it because I have a lot of DCF stuff that I have to do. So I have to um, have my own account. And I didn't feel right having CPAC pay for an account that I'm mostly going to be using. So, um, all right. So Tuesday... Tuesdays. Uh -huh. So, do we want to do the first one? I assume Rick school's going to start in September. That's the that's the question of the night. Uh, yeah. That so yes, the plan right now is that we're going to come back in the fall. We're working on that right now. You actually have a representative um, from CPAC uh, member Mary Beth Moore, who was one of your co-chairs, is a is a parent. And so you will have a pipeline to what the details are. But right now we are scheduled to come back at the normal time right around Labor Day. So that, that, that is the, the state plan and our plan at this point. Okay. So do you guys want to do a date the end of September or do you want to start at the beginning of October? I didn't know if we wanted to do one right before school started for any parents that might be interested. We've done that before. But it's up to whatever you think. So we could do the mute yourself, then hold down space bar to speak. Ah, okay. Got it. Um, so in September, they have all the back to school nights and all that. They do, but would it be different if, you know, we're doing most things on Zoom still, like meetings? I, it's hard to guess. Right. Will they be in-person meetings? Because that does make it difficult for parents to, you know, leave home and get out for an hour or two. But if, you know, they're virtual meetings and maybe people can do it like we're doing now so you can find, you know, much quicker. Right. Because I'd like to keep this as, um, as a virtual meeting as much as we can because I think we could probably get more people. Right. Yep. Child care is a big issue. Right. So, I mean... <laughs> it's all I'm sorry it just got awfully quiet upstairs <laughs> and it's only okay it's almost seven o'clock I have my husband putting all four of them to bed um so I think we should keep the zoom do you think we should keep I think we should just keep the zoom I'll just keep the account going it's only like 15 dollars a month mm -hmm. can right. we offer both maybe do you think like have it to start that way and then oh, maybe yeah eventually yeah no problem yeah opening? Crystal yeah, but Turner. I just want to leave that the Zoom as an option, right? Just Crystal. in case. Okay. If I may, I just want to add, um, I have an account through the school district as well. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to, if for some reason you didn't keep your account, and you wanted to simply have, you know, Renee in my office set the meeting up through Lake Cam, we could do so, and it wouldn't there would be no cost associated with that. Oh, okay. So we just have to contact Renee. 
That's correct. And if you look on the chat, Jose is also saying they have three accounts and it wouldn't cost anything either to host a meeting. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Crystal, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Under your bylaws, are you uh, following open meeting law? That is the question that came up tonight. We don't know. Okay. Uh, just because as far as um, this becoming, this is like an open meeting for parents, if parents are going to come and talk about their children, right. would this be put on late cam? So, well, there's two issues here. One, yes, the, the privacy issue. You, you can't get out there with that information. The other is um, we don't know if these relaxed open meeting law forums and platforms are going to continue. Mm -hmm. um, I have, uh, through my Commission on the Status of Women work, submitted a letter asking that we can continue because in many instances, such as your own, it's more convenient to have your husband putting kids to bed somebody else watching the homework and all that other stuff and getting in the car driving to a meeting so just keep in mind that we should be vigilant if you are going to conduct a meeting and and abide by the or comply with open meeting law we have to think about how to do it and we have to watch what happens on beacon hill mm -hmm. so i can have i can have liz curlin who's always joining you guys to keep you abreast of what's happening there relative to that piece and i know liz would do that for the group as well Right, and then we get um, Mass Pack from Les and the Federation for Children with Special Needs from Leslie Leslie all the time on what's going on with the DESI guidelines and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, I would just like to have it as an option because there are people here who have, I would say way more than I do on my plate as far as you know taking care of kids. I mean, I do have a teenager that I pay a lot of money when I leave the house to, to watch the kids and my husband. So yeah, so I can get out, but I just want it to be open for other people to have this as an option. I think we could get definitely get more people to come this way. Okay, so, so Tuesdays or Thursdays, guys. Anybody else have anything to say on that, the Zoom? Um, not on the Zoom, ahead. No. I was just going to say that Thursdays might be better for me, but if we're doing Zoom type thing, then I could probably sit in a parking lot and, you know, be attending that way because, uh, you know, I'm the only person here at night and I've got kids in sports and such, but um, I won't know how, if any of that's even going to happen for a while. Right, so as far I don't as, think yeah. it on me. I can try to make it work. Yeah. Zoom opens up a lot of flexibility if we do that too, because in your home, I don't have to worry about Chad getting home. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So Tuesdays it is. Do you guys want to pick the days now? Starting in October. So October, do you want to do like the second, the second week in October? That would be the 6th, October 6th. Okay. Are sure. okay with that? Mm -hmm. You guys know I'm writing this down and I'm, you know I'm gonna ask somebody later on that I forgot It'll to put it in my time. calendar. We know this, right? Are we gonna keep the same time 6.30? That's another thing I should ask. Are we gonna keep the same time 6.30? Or should we that put seems you back? pretty easy. 6.30? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes we extend past 8, so I think that 6.30 is good. Right. Even though I know that's tough time sometimes for some people, I think it gets even harder when we're there till like 8.30 or right. what have you. Yeah. Okay. That was so, October 6th. October 6th, yeah. Okay. Yep. Is that okay? Yep. So, and then the next one, if we skip November, but we go to December, but should we have something in November since December is, um, what is the month? We have something coming up in the month and I wrote it down on the last thing I did, but I forgot. It was special, it was special something. something. A special something, a month. something month. And we would have to prepare. You're talking about, uh, Crystal, you're talking about Disability Awareness Month? 
or something else. Yes. Thank you. See, I knew you would know. Somebody would know. Yeah. So Disability Awareness Month is the month of December. Mm -hmm. So do you want to have a meeting in November? We'd have to do October, November, and then have come up with something for December. Okay. That makes sense. That's Does that fine. make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me go back. So November. You always you end up canceling it? December anyway because of school stuff, but because of concerts and whatnot. So it, right. Let's just do it back to back. Okay. So when in November? Mm, when the second Tuesday might be uh, Veterans Day or around there. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I would do the first week if you can. Yeah, so that's the, I have the 11th as Veterans Day, a Wednesday. Okay, so it's Wednesday. Yep. So do you want to do the 17th? Because I'm sure starting in October, we're probably going to have to start doing, figuring out what we're going to do for Disabilities Month anyway. Hmm. That's because if we really want to do something, we're going to have to, you know, plan it. Plan it. I don't know. Everybody look at me with blank face. No, like, I'm just thinking. Like, <laughs> it's fine. I, it just seems so far away, but I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> the seventeenth. The seventeenth. Sure. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So we are going to skip December because that'll be Disabilities Awareness Month. And then, so. When do we come back from break? Let's all pretend like everything is wonderful and it's just going to continue right. to be a wonderful school year and not Zoom and everything. Um, you want to do the middle of January? 12th? That would probably be day after Martin Luther King Day, right? I don't know. No, the 18th is Martin Luther King. Oh, okay. So do you want to do the 12th or the 19th? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we skip February, and then we go to March. Do you want to do the second or the third uh, Tuesday, the ninth or the sixteenth? For me, the sixteenth would be better. Everybody else, 16th? Sure. Okay. Okay. So May, Cinco de Mayo, we could do that Wednesday. And if we're Zooming, we could all start having drinks from home. Nobody would ever know. <laughs> Safety first, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the 4th or the 11th? Either is fine, really. Eleventh would be better for me. Okay. All right. And then we will have to have one ending uh, to wrap things up. So that would be June. So um, the eighth. June 8th? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Chorus concerts often are on that time of year. Are they? On that yeah. week? Usually a Tuesday, though? I don't know. Yeah, they have been, I believe. Is that correct? Okay. Do you remember? All right. Do you want to do the first week of June or the third week of June? I'd say probably first. So That's June 1st? What does everybody think? I'm fine with the first. Yeah, okay. first. All right. Okay. So that's that. Crystal. Yes, ma'am. What was the date on June 1 again? Sorry. Was it the first or? June 1st, yep. June 1st, okay. 630. Yep. Okay. All right. All well, that's taken care of. Anything? else? Any topics?
Do we have anything they want to throw out so we can find people? Don't everybody talk at once. I have a question. We have Rick here. We can have him. Okay. Um, if they do, is there a plan to do back to school nights or, or no? Yes, Melissa, if I, if I may. Um, yeah, so our intent is obviously to try to, as you probably have all heard as parents, there are three plans in place, but the, the primary focus is to get all the kids back to school, obviously, and that's our number one priority right now. And if that's the case, they we'll be able to have those events as well. So we do have them tentatively booked, just like you guys are kind of booking your meetings. So those mm -hmm. events should, should, in fact, take place. Um, best I can best tell I can you right now. Okay. I mean, that was my one thing was uh, trying to have as much, um, you know, access to those or see who we can get. Because I know a lot of us have middle school kids right now, but trying to go to some of those and at least hand out a little bit of information um, so that parents who are coming in either who, um, you know, are new, you know, kindergarten kind of, or just their child just ended up on an IEP this year. And maybe they weren't aware that we existed and kind of, you know, give some information out there. Maybe people have heard CPAC and don't really know what it means or what it is. So um, I'd like to be able to, to ha you know, have a table. Like they, they do have some of the other, um, the PTO, and sometimes I've seen sports and such there. So just to kind of have that presence would be good if we can. We, Melissa, you, you absolutely have my permission. Um, that usually just goes through the principals. Once we have those dates identified as just all I need to do is have one of the chairs uh, share that information and we'll make sure we have a, an available table for you or, or some opportunity uh, because you're absolutely right. That is a great opportunity to, um, to connect with parents. And if we have those events, you certainly can do so. I also encourage you guys to use the super tense corner and put a little blurb in about CPAC as well. And I know uh, Liz Curlin will talk it up as well. But yeah, you definitely can use the back to school nights. I have a question. How do we find out who the chairs are for the PTOs? Is that like published somewhere on the website or do we have to go through the principals? Uh, both uh, Liz, uh, Liz Curlin or I can get that information for you. You don't have to go through the principals. We can easily provide that. Renee can send something out to you guys. I can get that information. I'm not sure if they've already done their officers or not for next year. They probably did okay. their last meeting like you guys are doing now. Um, okay. I'll forward something to you, Crystal. Okay, thanks. Um, Melissa, we had one more question that we thought of. What was it? It had to do something with the PTOs. We were going to send out a message. We were going to try to do back to school nights with them. Now see, I know I have a preschooler. That's so, what I was gonna <laughs> So for preschool, I would like to get as many preschool and kindergarten parents as I possibly can. And how could I? Well, I'll tell you what we've done before many, many years ago is having a presence at the, at the preschool before school starts. They usually have some kind of welcome to school starting school and i think before it was at the um in st pierre back then and i know myself i was there to have information for other parents do you know what i'm talking about crystal have you been invited to a back to school before for school starts this is going back with bryce so this is a long way back i can't Steph, remember you're I'll meet you know, 10 so. years Crystal, if I may, Stephanie, you're absolutely no, correct. Right. Mike Ward facilitates that as the principal over at the preschool. And um, once I have that date and information, I could share that with you. I think that would be a great opportunity. They usually do some welcome uh, at the start of the school, and it's an informal piece. Everybody's there, obviously. They're all excited with the kids. Um, and so I, I certainly, once I have that date, he may already have it, um, I can forward that to you as well, or through Liz. Um, I have a question. Now, we started working on the survey for the remote learning for CPAC parents. Now, how do I get that out? I don't have the listserv. Do we, can we have access to the listserv to send it out to all the parents? Liz, I, yes, uh, that, that's a confidentiality. Um, that is a confidentiality question and we cannot release the names and, and contact information of parents with students with disabilities. Oh. But Liz, they could forward that survey they through can. your office and we could get that out for you easily. Right. We can, yes. So I just send it to Jen and Jen would send it out. 
Well, we'd okay. like to, I think we've got to read it first. So no, you yes. don't have to. According to Desi, any surveys that we send out, you don't have any say over. So that's why I said I wanted to know if we could have access to the listserv. So, I mean, that might be a question for MassPAC that I might bring up to Leslie Leslie or Federation of Students with Special Needs to find out if we can have access since, you know, when we send out a survey, um, you don't have any say over it. So that would just, I guess that would just be something that we would have to look up and find out if we could get access. There we go. So now I have a question for her. Listserv. Okay. So, yeah. You know how I am. Um, mm -hmm. I have my little pet projects, and um, the t-shirt idea that we had talked about before. Yes, that's a great idea. Yes. I know. Um, no, um, I was wasn't sure if you guys wanted to try to do that, like coming up in August at some point um, before school. So that could be something that kids could get excited about. Maybe something that if we wanted to, we could have um, with us as part of our back to school night fundraiser situation. But um, we could also just do the link where we're sending it out to everybody. But if you wanted to do that for August, then we can kind of work on getting our design that we want and that kind of thing to just kind of, um, you know, we could do a couple little fundraisers like that, but without having to take too much focus and thought into um, right. into doing something crazy while we're trying to get you know organized speakers and meetings and such this year. Right. Yeah, that would be a good idea. I like the t-shirt idea that you had. I don't know. What did you show me? You showed me like three or four of them. We could just yeah. put it out there, and everyone could just decide on which one they wanted and which right. one was the most popular, and then we could just go from there. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Plus, we also wanted to see how we could do fundraisers with the PTO and just make us all just one group rather than it's CPAC and then it's the PTO. Just see if we could just come together as just one group. Okay. Um, anything else? Anybody? Anybody have any questions? Anybody have any thoughts? No. Crystal, mm -hmm. I would just add, I would just add the task force has a meeting in a couple of weeks, and obviously mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of information coming out this summer about the start of school, which will obviously impact all kids. You gave me a couple of you're a good group because you've given me a couple of homework assignments. See, I'm going to get you the PTO chairs. I'll get that <laughs> preschool date um, if there is already one set up, and I'll forward to you for Mr. Ward, and then we'll facilitate the survey through Liz's office. And I know you're going to check on the the legality of the listserv either way we'll right. get the survey out for you guys so don't worry okay. about that yeah oh regarding special education and the return of school is that going to be like a special up topic of discussion because I, I i just watched the um, task force today and i know not much was said about special education so that's a different animal compared to our yeah. general ed classroom Stephanie, good, good. You obviously you did catch that second one. Yeah, the first couple of meetings have been real introductory. We're just getting it. We haven't really got into the, you know, kind of the meat and potatoes of what's happening there. But that's actually why uh, Mary Beth was selected. So CPAC was was represented because obviously um, that instruction and that and that that your group need, certainly needs representation there. But as the building level teams get together, there are special education teachers there, and we go into get a little bit closer. I can tell you that the states push is regardless of what model we have that all um, that all those students and sub separate programs are in are on site and are not remote and so i do know that the the push to all districts is that we should not um you know we need we need these kids to return to school and be on site and be engaged and and those special education students with iep specifically so i'm encouraged by that stephanie but um as the meetings play out in the over the summer I think you're going to see more detail behind it as we get closer, but you're absolutely right. There wasn't a whole lot of substance in relation to the, the detail yet, but, but, but it's coming. And, and we certainly, I think this group will be represented. Okay. Thank you. I have a question, Crystal. I, I know you're putting this survey together and it's fantastic. I was just curious, are you going to, 
be asking people um, more in-depth questions such as um, relating to their anxiety, relating to their concerns about being home or childcare or any of those things. Because I think that I'm finding, and again, back to the commission, we're asking women uh, what the really compelling issues are. And we're, we're doing a deep dive on it, um, really getting down. Are you financially stressed? Are, are you, do you feel at risk at home? Um, are you coping with the children okay? Or what kind of supports do you need with real specificity? Yes. I think she's muted. Crystal, you're muted. Sorry, here I am. I'll let me unmute myself. <laughs> okay, I think, I think we need to ask some in-depth questions because I think a lot of parents were very stressed out over this remote learning. Because I know when we had to do a particular thing, and Stephanie, I think you can agree with me because our kids were in the same class, that I think it was island something and telling my son that he only had to do 25 minutes of this, but then the next day it went on. And if he didn't do the whole thing, he wouldn't know the next thing. So we had a problem with that. And then, you know, it, I will just, you know, I know everybody doesn't have as many kids as I do right now, but it was just all the other kids. And then early intervention was also doing FaceTime. So it was like we had Zoom in the other room, FaceTime over here. Then my husband was trying to work over there. And it was just like, it was just crazy. And I know that for us, it's been very stressful. And I'm sure for other parents, it was just like, when can we talk to our one-on-one? -on -one? Okay, we're not getting a hold of our one-on-one. -on -one. How can we do this? You know, it's, uh, it's just, yes. So, and, and even things like food insecurity. I mean, there are, we, the school did a fantastic job making sure meals got out and we didn't right. have any issues, but we know in other districts that the time of the distribution was not convenient for working parents or parents with right. very young children. So these are things that I would hope in your survey, you do the deep dive on because a lot of people are reluctant, and at least in a survey, you can be fairly anonymous, but they're reluctant to, to come to you and say, I'm food insecure, I'm unsafe in my home, I'm freaking out and depressed, I am financially stressed. I mean, these are things we would be beneficial so we can find out what supports people need. And that we need district-wide, but, but certainly with your group, it's unique. I mean, the, the issues of, of the children here are, are special and they require special attention. Oh, I hate it when I'm on the big screen. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put it this way. If you guys have any questions that you want us to put on the survey, send them to me. We'll, we'll put it on there. Yeah. You know, if, yeah, absolutely. So anybody can add any questions. I, I don't think the survey we had sent out before asking people different things, I only kept it to 10 questions because I know people were like, okay, yeah, all right, Crystal, whatever, yep blah, blah, blah. And that was it. But I want this to be something that people can say, oh my God, thank you for asking me this question. Cause nobody ever asked us this. Right. Nobody asked us, you know, you know, having a back-to-back -back zoom was not good for my child. You know, they needed a break. Okay. I needed a break from grabbing my kid and then having to redirect and do all these things. And it, it's just, it's difficult. Yeah. I mean, we can sit there with my son and he'll do the Zoom and he'll complain, but that's just, just Bryce. But somebody else's child might not be able to sit there for 20 minute intervals of Zoom back to back to back. It's just, right. it's just not something that can happen. But I, don't, I think if we don't reach out to the parents and say, okay, what works best? How can we fix this? What can we do? Let me know. Tell me. Because I'll even leave bank spaces where you can write a whole paragraph. And yes, we will read it. Mm -hmm. We'll read it. I'll read it in my spare time. I promise. <laughs> so, Crystal, so it won't be something that would be on, like, social media, obviously, then, because you, you need a different platform because not everyone uses social media. I will you figure know, out something. That's where it gets tricky, I guess. I think that's why she's trying to figure out how to use, if the district could send it out, because I think that's the problem. <laughs> What, how many people did we reach with the last one? A handful, a fraction right. of the small, actual population in a special ed. Yeah. Right. So, and those are great questions too. Definitely um, about, you know, more more like the whole picture than just about the learning experience. Right. 
So you could use, they have survey monkey out there. I don't know if you've used that before, but that yeah. could be used and then you can send it out, you know, if you through listserv or Liz or whatever. Right. It's a listserv mm -hmm. to make sure everybody gets it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my question is, what are you going to do with the information once, once you get all this? I'm going to say to Rick and details. Liz, how can we fix this? What can we do right now? And I'll say to Jean too, hey, Jean, what can we do with all this information? Okay. I collected all of this. Now, what can I do? I can tell you what I want to do, but what can you guys do? Right. Or offer resources or put right. them on right. your website. Have to be. Maybe some people just need direction. Okay. You're, yes, yeah, superwoman all day, every day. Yeah, as you can see by all the stuff behind me, all the busy. I don't. <laughs> yep. You're I'll tell you one thing that I was involved with during this is um, a family training every single week with another organization. It's probably something that would have been best beneficial for us. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who would lead it. If it would be like a psychologist or something, but it was definitely something that we've been doing every week since this happened and helping us with our children on any kind of behavior issues or stress relief or anything that they needed. So I'm not sure if that's something that could have been done for us during this time that we should have maybe even if this happened again, plan for it. I totally agree, Stephanie. I feel like there's resources out there that, you know, that's what this, the CPAC could be best used for is helping people know what resources are available to them. Definitely. Okay. Let me unmute myself. Um, a lot of times I've gone to stuff for DCF and they don't even know what CPAC is when I talk to the social workers, but I can re I've reached out to a lot of social workers to ask what, what do you guys offer? offer where can I where? get, where can I get some of these things? So for that, they've been very good at, you know, giving me different programs and different things that I can reach out to to put up for the different kids. And as everybody knows, I research everything to death and I usually put up whatever I find out. Mm -hmm. um, Fragile Footprints, I know works in Plymouth County. Right. And I've done a lot of researching and stuff for Fragile Footprints. Um, I've actually worked as an advocate for them a couple of times, education advocate. Um, and they have a lot of resources. I actually, I think I posted one in our Facebook group that they were doing a talk on um, dealing with medically fragile children at home during this crisis. Now for Freetown, you guys are in Bristol County. Mary Beth, do you know who that is? I know Fragile Footprints does not go for you guys there, but do you know? No, I don't know what no. the company is. Okay. Because it's very strange. I don't know why we're in two different districts, like just the two different counties. So when I had asked Fragile Footprints, they said, did you not cover um, Bristol County? But I will find out who does because I keep forgetting to find that out. Um, but it is something for kids that they offer, um, which, which is called palliative care, but mm -hmm. it's not really palliative care, so to speak. They give different therapies. And I know they've zoomed Bryce when he's home to, you know, just, hey, Bryce, how you doing? Let's do some music. Let's do all these different things that they offer. And um, they offer spa days for mom and for dad. And they do a lot of different things. And for Mother's Day, I got this huge package of stuff. And just to tell me, happy Mother's Day. You know, we appreciate you. And I think that, the, you know, I cried. I'm a big wimp when it's stuff like that comes in the mail. So I was like, oh, my God, this is so nice. No, you didn't even you price, didn't it. price it. You're ridiculous. <laughs> so I think something like that, if I could find out, I have to find out the name for Bristol County, who actually handles it. And a lot of times there is a waiting list. But, um, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Crystal, even even if there's a waiting list, though, just to have like maybe there's links to resources on, yeah, on any of those yeah. sites, which would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what people seem to think is lacking the most uh, from what people I've talked to, that they're just, they don't know where to find resources that are probably readily available, but 
you know, unfortunately, a lot of these resources aren't going to track you down. They're not going to come knock on your door and say, hey, we have all these wonderful things for you and your special needs family. It just doesn't work right. that way. Like DDS. I know some of you guys have DDS, right? Department of Dem uh, Developmental Services. Yes. Yeah, we don't. Some do. No. Yes. No. I think it's half and half. Half. Okay. So if we, if we could just come up with a list, I'm sure I have a list somewhere. I think I get a list from early intervention paperwork. That's a while, good idea. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. While we're on this topic, um, I know we had talked about this before, but maybe about having, um, having somebody or if anybody has a recommendation of somebody um, to come in and talk about, we were talking about anxiety and different things that have affected the kids this year, but anxiety is always a topic that, you know, applies to almost anybody. So it doesn't have to be parents per se who have kids on IEPs or 504s, but um, if any, if we could get a recommendation from somebody of a, you know, a speaker or um, something like that, that would be great. Cause I know we could go through, uh, you know, Federation, but what? Well, yeah, that was bad. We had some, yeah, we had a speaker from the Federation, and that was bad. Oh, she was awful. She was talking about MCAS, and Liz had to correct her. And thank God we had Nicole, the Tara there. Nicole kind of helped us out, and oh, she was bad. She was bad. So yeah, I, so I, I want to look at the recommendations, or maybe another CPAC has a. Has right, that's what I was going to say. Melissa and I have joined just about every CPAC in this area, so we could probably throw that out there that we're looking for someone to speak on anxiety. We could probably. I mean, we probably went to one home. a couple of years ago, and I can't think of who the name was. It was um, Middleborough put it on though, okay. and she was really good. She was really really funny. Um, Nicole might remember who it was, uh, but they got a big group because they put us, we went in with them and they had a big group. They used their auditorium. I just can't think of what her name was. I want to say her name was also Jessica, um, but Nicole might remember her full name, um, but she was, she was really good. And it just was, a, it was actually a really good time. Just out. Yes. Yeah, yes. That sounds like Jessica Minahan. Yes, that's it. <laughs> right. Yes, that's, she's really she's really good. She's excellent. Liz Curlin, um, we've actually facilitated her with our teachers, so I bet you mm -hmm. Liz could probably reach out. She's, she's in high demand right now because of everybody. Sure. But, mm -hmm. but I agree with you. She's very um, she's very engaging and and yeah. captures it. Um, yeah. I, I put the note down and and I can follow up with Liz and see what we can do. Okay. Yeah, okay. I would recommend her. I enjoyed. I got stuff for myself just everyday tips. Um, but some long-term things for kids and just everybody. She was just really good. So I think we could look at her. Okay. Anything else? I know I'm part of the ARC. I don't know if anyone's part of the ARC and they've had a lot of really good um, seminars that they invite us to attend. Um, that have been really beneficial. And I, I think to your point of having all these things, you won't need to go find people to join the CPAC. If, if there's a value add, then it's going to be um, word of mouth will travel quick for people who need the resources because it is so difficult to navigate as Mary Beth said, they don't just hand you the resources. You have to figure it out yourself. So if we were able to help families, find the right resources that they need, that would be a huge value add, I think. Very good, thank you. Where is the ARC anyway? Is that Bristol County? Is that just Bristol County or is it? I feel like they have it in multiple counties, but mine is Bristol County. Okay. Actually, mine, mine's ahead of, but I'll look into it. I'll get back to you on that, Crystal. Okay. And this one in Brockton too, because we brought Corinne there to um, do like a sibling session. Okay. So I think that might be Plymouth. That is like, Plymouth. So I think it's every county. county. Yeah. Every county yeah. has to have one. Is it one of those that every county has to have? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think there's one in Middleborough, but they're a small office, and but we went to the one in Brockton. Yeah, they're out of Attleboro, but they do stuff in um, Middleborough. They offer yeah different services through the Middleborough. Um, but I don't. 
Oh, they do have that place. There is one, I think it's Route 28 over there by um, Trukies, like heading towards Trukies. Yeah, I think there's so. There's a, I don't know if it's an office. I wouldn't call it an office necessarily, but there's a place where they do their events. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I see. Hmm. Yeah, the Ark of Bristol County is in Middleborough. Which is odd because yeah, that's not Middleborough, Middleborough isn't even part of the county. Middleborough is Plymouth. Okay. Uh, Crystal, well, before I forget, I wanted to give a quick update of, um, I know we had discussed last summer um, with Mr. Higgins from the middle school uh, about doing um, unified sports. Mm -hmm. And I just reached out to him to see if, you know, if there's any, I understand now it's kind of difficult to really um, plan things and to everyone's been busy with all this other stuff that probably wasn't, you know, top priority, but that's okay. Um, but he's, he did say that he um, is still interested in moving forward and working on that. So I just wanted to kind of get everybody that. And then I offered at least my help or anybody else who's willing to help. I mean, it might just be really basic um, stuff that they might need help with, but, um, but I offered anyway, if that he could always contact us if he needed any volunteers for anything. Excellent. Right, and I had reached out to Mrs. Teresa, uh, the physical therapist, and at that time also Mary, the OT. She said she will help and give as much advice as she can. And I spoke to Ms. Briggs over at the middle school and she said she'd be more than happy to help us out with setting something up for you. Yeah, I think sports. the main thing was getting um, a coach and then they just have to be uh, certified or trained through Special Olympics. But I think that, mm -hmm. you know, I, as I explained to him, which he may have already known because he's run the program before at other districts, but um, just that I think November is a deadline here and then somebody has to go through a training. So whoever it is, he seemed very interested in being involved himself from that meeting that we had. So um, I just kind of wanted to give everybody an update because I know it's, um, it's, again, one of my little pet projects that I've been kind of obsessing on this year about getting accomplished. But this year has been a little wonky, so um, it is what it is, but hopefully we can get something like that going forward because I know middle school, there's so many activities for, uh, you know, general education kids that we want to have something um, right. for the special ed kids as well. Okay. Anything else? Anybody? No? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And we only took up maybe an hour. So much accomplished. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>